Good evening, welcome to Flory Models Live. Here we are, Thursday night, 24th of August 2017, uh, using the new setup and everything else like that. So if you guys are in the chat area, I'm in the chat room as well, so if you wanna post up any questions, usual bits and pieces like in there, like if the audio's okay, like if there's any lag, uh, any problems at all, shout up and we can get them fixed in the next sort of, you know, five, six minutes before we actually go on air. There does seem to be a little bit of a lag, but the weird thing to it is, it seems to actually clear as time goes on because when I was watching the recording or the playback of the one that I did five at live it seemed to be lag right at the beginning but by the end of it it's gone so I don't know if playing with settings but I do have four suites of settings I've got all the studio equipment down in front of me now all the different monitors that are feeding off of this thing the only thing we haven't got is the actual iPad uh, on the go because that's doing an update for some reason it won't now work with the system we got my phone is integrated into it but my phone's over on the other side now so if you can let me know if we're all good in there, if somebody can shout up that you can see me and that we can hear me and everything else like that in the chat area, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, what do we got? Eight of you watching live. Uh, we seem to be all okay. Let me just go through my cameras for tonight. So, split. Yep, split seems to be okay. Uh, we just want to check, making sure these are all good. That seems to be all okay. Alright, let me just check the audios, that seems to be all good, uh, and everything else. So, hopefully everyone can see and hear. If somebody can pop in the chat area, um, you know, the actual chat room, just let me know we are streaming live would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, hopefully we're okay. I think we're alright. Uh, Right, so what have we got? 17 watching live now. The only thing I can't see is the thing over there, but that's no problem. Uh, down and in, settings, CPUs, GPUs, and everything else all seem to be okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're all right. We seem to be all there. Uh, I can see it and hear you, no lag so far, uh, as I can tell. Any chance you could do a demo of getting really glossy finish with floor care? Thanks as always, Rob Lee. Yeah, I can give it a whirl. I've got it all here, all the different types to show you about it. Um, there's fors and against using those products, uh, as we, you'll see in a moment, because what we're going to do is talk tonight all about all the different uh, effects you can get with them. So things like using clear as a flat, I know it sounds odd and weird and it still seems strange to me, but you can. Uh, and then what we're gonna try and do is gloss buster, which should be a lot of fun tonight because if we can gloss in, we can do anything. Um, and then we've got Harrier down in here, which is glossy and we're gonna try and matte. Uh, and then we've got this other one that we've been working all the way through this entire series. So we're gonna try and do some nifty things with that one as well. So using various products we've got down here, which is probably oh, hopefully what a lot of you guys have got at home as well. So we've got down in here clears, we've got down in here polyurethane glosses, we've got goozies, we've got uh, sealer coats, we've got two pack paints, we've got uh, super clear, we've got matte acrylic, uh, which is a resin weirdly, uh, and everything else like that. So hopefully we'll be absolutely fine. So who have we got in the chat tonight? Let me see. Um, doo -doo -doo, online, okay. So we got Rob, Stuart and Tony in the chat area. Seems quite quiet so far tonight, but never mind. We will push on as ever uh, and see where we get to with all of this lot. Should be a little bit of fun. Usual thing, what we do, we'll run this for about, you know, an hour, and then any questions you want at the end of it, uh, we can go through on there, so no problem at all. So we just let everything settle down. The computer's settling down a little bit as well, which is nice. Evening all, Stuart, lovely to have you here. Um, seems funny now, because I have, it, it, talk about overkill. We now have, underneath this camera, I can see everything from all the cameras all at once. Uh, and this is what runs through the studio thing. And also I can press little buttons like here. And now I've got little sub menus have all come out. So this is all the audio levels and everything else like that. And then I can do all the camera angle settings. So when we do like, you know, special effects and like that picture in picture business and all stuff like that, that's all, I can see it before you see it, if you know what I mean. So I can preview it first. Then over on this particular monitor on this side, I've got the chat area up. 
Uh, and then I've obviously got the live streaming software, which is obviously how it actually gets out to the world. And then behind that, on that giant monitor, I've got two screens over there. One of them's got the actual forum in, and the other one has got the live suite from um, YouTube, which is obviously the, the software from that. So I can see to make sure if everything's going out as well. So hopefully we're all really good and we're going to be up for this. So good evening, Tony. Lovely to have you here as well. Remember guys, if you haven't seen it, we are in the chat room. If you want to go to the live chat area, post it up in there and you can obviously see some of the questions. I'll read out any questions that come up through there um, and anything that's relevant. Obviously, I know what they're like in there. They'll get carried off on a side talk and everything else. Um, and we'll go from there. But hopefully this is back to us being live again. Obviously live at five. I hope you enjoyed it. First time we've ever tried to do something like that. That computer isn't the best for it, it gets extremely noisy, um, as you might hear we get a little fan noise with everything going on at the moment, but hopefully you said next week on probably Tuesday now when the old computer comes back, or the new computer comes back I should say, we should be back to good and we can do everything. At the moment, for the guys that have asked about streaming with Steve and that, uh, I can't at the moment because this computer will not cope with doing everything as it does, it just about copes with what we're doing, but it certainly won't be able to cope with like uh, HD Skype feeds coming in from Steve and Hans or Matt or anybody else who's going to be in uh, at once so um, it could be a little bit of a problem so good evening to Andrew my Thatcher drinking buddy <laughs> I might get one later I have a fridge full of them stacked up Michael's here as well so is Daniel everyone's flooding in now see look you're all you're all late where have you been we've been sat here since five o'clock so what have we got We're about about one minute to run um, Today's one is a strawberry water. Purely because I forgot my um, cups. That's what we do need though. Okay. We need some of those. We need brushes, clamps, everything else we got here. And then we'll spray everything nice and glossy tonight. Uh, good evening, Frederick. Lovely to have you here. Okay, right, I think we're all here. What have we got? 38 in watching live. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the intro and we'll start. Welcome to Thursday Night Live with me for Airbrushing 101 or the basic range or as it is now the last in the series. I uh, hope you're enjoying all the live stuff. Apologies it's been a bit of a delay. Trust me I didn't realise it's been a whole month. Actually it's over a month, it's like five weeks since we did the last one. But obviously with computer breakdowns and everything that's gone on and holiday bits and pieces and things like that, it has been a little bit of a nightmare trying to get this all sorted. As I say, thank you, uh, great to have you all. So we've got live in the chat room. Remember, if you wanna come and join us in the chat room as well, you can ask questions direct as I'm working it. Just click on the actual tab at the top of the actual uh, forum underneath the logo girls up there, and there's the one called chat, go in. Sometimes it asks you to log in again, just do it the once, but if you click the remember me, you only have to do it once and you'll be in there. So good evening to Andrew, Archie, Daniel, Rob, Steve, Stuart, Tony, Dave, uh, Frederick, Michael and Steve, who have all just jumped in the actual uh, live chat room and everything else like that. So good evening, welcome. This is gonna be, as I said, the last in the live series. Uh, basics. We will move on, we're going to go on to more sort of intermediate things and we'll be talking about obviously different techniques and then what we're going to do is cover things like weathering uh, evening. So we might just cover like uh, for an evening one, one about washes and I don't just mean clay wash, uh, other people's washes and things like that and filtering, rust techniques. So we'll do standalone evenings as well but this was really to get everybody up to speed with airbrushing. Okay so We've covered pretty much, I think, everything that you need to start you on the right track, okay? Hopefully we've dispelled a lot of myths and, uh, you know, certainly a lot of, I won't say it, but certainly there's a lot of people out there who have very strong opinions on how you should airbrush and totally, they're idiots, they haven't got a clue what they're on about. So what I've tried to show you is, is to get you the quickest and fastest way to get you up airbrushing by really knowing what's going on with your airbrush and more importantly, 
why it's going wrong because as I said before knowledge is everything if you know why it's going wrong you can fix it and if you can fix it on the fly as in as you're actually airbrushing and you can adjust little things to just improve the flow so you're not getting spitting and you've just got a generally a nice enjoyable airbrushing session that is all you can ever hope for trust me airbrushing is one of those things where to start with it is just a little bit of a black art form and everything else like that it's one of those things where you don't tend to pick it up straight away it's like driving a manual car okay it takes a little bit of dexterity a little bit of clutch a little bit of brake you know a little bit of throttle it is just dancing on all the pedals just to get it to where you want to be exactly the same with an airbrush you're just slightly adjusting things perhaps you know you're actually your distance away from your air the amount of air Air pressure that's going down there the actual consistency of the paint how much paint and everything else once you get to know it and you can see what's going wrong it's a lot easier just to adjust a little thing correct problems or start again and everything else like that rather than just getting annoyed shouting at your airbrush and just blaming all your equipment and everything else like that because that guy Flory makes it look so bloody easy and everything else hopefully now you've sort of do what I do and say listening to your airbrush it sounds really stupid and actually when I listen to myself back it sounds stupid but it's true it does work if you can hear your airbrush if you can hear it crackling you know and it's not happy you know, there's a reason to it it either means more air it needs to actually you know atomize the paint better or it might need thinning a little bit more if it's looking really wet and it's just horrible and you're getting like tide marks in it you've got your air pressure too much or you're too close it's just knowing all those little tiny things put them all together and you end up with hopefully a pretty good airbrushing sort of technique and everything else so Tonight, what we're going to be looking at is clear coats. Again, a little bit of a myths with it. Okay, so we're going to be dispelling a lot of those. So what we've got down here is pretty much, I'm hoping, what most of you have all got at home in one form or another. So good old fashioned clear. So we've got the original clear, we've got the milky white stuff, and we've got the new stuff as well, which I absolutely love. Okay, down in front, we've got acrylic resin. Okay, not to be mistaken uh, with uh, other types of resin uh, uh, mats out there and glosses and everything else. All right. We've got super clear which is basically like a lacquer we got polyurethane which is a little bit of a nemesis to this stuff but you know a lot of people have it out there one of my favorites we got Tamiya uh, XF86 okay we got some goozy agent okay which actually I do like it is very good it's not a million miles away from that stuff but it is a little bit different we got two pack hardeners I know it's not everyone's cup of tea uh, but there's definitely a place for it in the hobby okay and last but not least we've got a model master sealer which I still maintain is one of the best coats you can get for actually doing any type of metalizer work and all the rest of it but in general it's a really really nice um, gloss now the thing is with all glossing and matte coats and everything else like that it is all down to the surface of your actual paint all right so from our point of view we've got a couple of characters down here you all know buster Buster's going to be used for gloss work I know it'll be interesting to see it as well but um, Buster is pretty horrible he's covered in dust he's covered in well horrible it's he's not nice these days bless him okay we've got a Harrier you might recognize this one we used it for demoing the new Sanders with where we glossed him up so this is actually a really nice smooth glossy uh, model okay and the one we've been working from all the way through on this one which is mini buster as he's now known and that is the lightning okay so we can do various different coats and shades and everything else with him and things like that okay so start with a couple of things dispel the rumors about needle size and about airbrushes which are designed to do gloss work and all the rest of it now i'm sure matt you know obviously he's a car painter and he's taught me a lot about gloss work would disagree but on cars it is a slightly different matter um, it's totally different from airbrushing with a normal one but technically an airbrush like this instead of like a car painting gear and all the rest of it it can do it it doesn't matter if you've got like a 0.15 or you've got a six mil needle they are all capable of doing gloss work okay now gloss work in its simplest form is just making an ultra smooth finish so it reflects light okay so the thing is with all gloss work it is just the thing is if it's got any type of like you know sort of uh, movement in the surface if it's got a little bit of orange peel if it's got a little bit of obviously texture okay it's just going to actually going to deflect light instead of it just bouncing clean off it's going to get caught up in all the texture and then you're going to get a flat that is it there's no difference between a gloss and a flat it's just to do with texture and how it goes down okay now there is different things to this and I know you can get textured paint and everything else but from our point of view we're just talking about clear glosses okay and things like that so a couple of things 
clears great no problem at all standard steadfast gloss paint for absolute ages but trying to get true gloss finishes with it like mirror finishes is a little bit tricky purely because the paint is very very thin okay this stuff is extremely thin so you're gonna have to build it up over you know consecutive layers to bring it up so you're into that thing of having this mirror finish that's what it's all about satin finishes probably the easiest thing you can do with clears like this one okay the normal standard clears high air pressure sprayed from a little bit away will give you a beautiful satin finish all right no problem at all if you're talking into the flat paint, then it does help to have a type of matte or flat type of paint, purely because they have a texture into them. We've all seen it, we've all got it. Let me just grab mine. Okay, this here is flat base, okay? So flat base, as we all know, is, if I can get in, as you can see, I don't use it very often, is this stuff. It's chalky, horrible. The whole point of this is it gives texture into your paint or certainly into your um, you know your clear coats and things like that which then transfers on so this stuff becomes the actual surface texture of the paint which makes it more of a flat finish this particular stuff here in the old days used to mix it with clear glosses to make a matte or a satin finish and various things like that to be honest these days with modern paints and you know ranges coming out like they are these days it's not really worth it. Uh, it's one of those things, figure painters probably use it a lot, but for model making, honestly, good flat paints, satins and stuff, you can just go out and get them rather than adding this stuff to it. Because the thing is, if you add too much, you get a chalky look to your models, okay? And they just look like it's snowing, okay? You don't put enough in there, nothing really happens. It's a very fine line. So I don't actually recommend using that stuff for making up flats and stuff, various things to it. So, first of all, what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our original buster down here, okay? And we're gonna talk about actually just putting down a normal thin gloss coat, okay? So for that, we're gonna use just some normal, um, one of these, I'll tell you what, we use the old floor care when we're using, okay? If I can get the top off. Okay, so Neil says, Phil, would you recommend a dedicated varnishing airbrush? I don't know about a dedicated one just for doing varnishing and glossing, but certainly if you've got a load of airbrushes kicking around, if you use one just for clears, the nice thing that you get no contamination. So obviously if you've got an airbrush and you've got various things in there, um, like metalizers, there can be a little bit difficult to get rid of that. If you're actually, you know, your color cup, your needle end, even if you cleaned it really good, sometimes they can come back. So if you have got, you know, and to be honest, I do tend to use this one all the time, my AL one. I tend to use this for doing all my sort of clear jobs and stuff. But, you know, it's not necessary, but if you've got them, use them. That's what I say. I'm not one not to, you know, do these things. Okay, so we're just going to put a little drip in here. That's way too much, but hey-ho. So let me just come over here, blast some of that out. Okay. I have got pipettes on order. I could do with them sort of yesterday. All right, so I'll tell you what, should we try something like a split screen for a moment? Hold on, I should be able to, you want to go here and just adjust a little bit of this. There we go. Okay, so you want to see the screen just down there a little bit, right. Okay, so we just going to grab a little bit of bounty purely because I don't want to spray everything. All right. So, a couple of things to think about when your airbrushing clears, okay? First of all is your air pressure. The higher air pressure, the faster the paint's gonna be traveling, okay? Or in this case, the clear's gonna be traveling, okay? But also, the more it's gonna be drying. You've got air behind it that's pushing it in, okay? So it's gonna be drying that surface, even though it's just, you know, just cold air, it's still gonna be drying it as you're putting it down. The thing is, that can work against you if you want a glossy finish. If you want a satin or a flat finish, that's no problem at all, all right? But if you're doing it for, a, you want a nice glossy finish, what you need to do is knock that air pressure back Okay, so you can move closer to the model and you haven't got this huge blast of air that's trying to push it and dry it. Again, don't forget, it's quite thin. This is neat straight out of the bottle. It's gonna be quite wet looking, all right? So what we do, we'll just take some of this out, okay? So we're just gonna down our air pressure. Just a little bit, all right? So when you're coming in, okay, we're about this sort of distance away. Okay, and I'm just going to do this wing. So we're just going to put in one thin 
go right the way over. Okay, now if I just go there, you can probably see it's not very nice. You see how it's all sort of speckly and it's not sort of leveled down on there and it's a little bit all over the place. Okay, what's happening is the surface is physically repelling it. Okay, it's, it's polished surface, it doesn't know what to do, it's being flooded and it's just beading up on itself. Okay, so that actually isn't very good and you definitely don't want that type of effect because that will now just transfer. More and more coats you give to it, it's going to come up, it's going to get worse and worse and worse as the time goes on. Okay, we'll deal with that in a moment. So what you need to do is just come along. Okay, first of all we're going to lower that air pressure just a little bit. Okay, and then to start with, what we're going to do, we're just going to pop down here. We're going to put on a nice little dusty coat just over the entire wing. Okay, and we're just going to cut to where. And we're just going to dry it down. And this will be enough then to break the surface tension. Let's up the air pressure a little bit. Okay, and we'll just dry it down. See, it's got a little bit of a speckle to it, but nothing like the other side has. Okay, we're just going to dry this down. And now it's got a little bit of a surface on there. You might see it's looking quite shiny, but obviously you can see the other side, how horrible that is. So what we're going to do, just dry down that side a bit. Great thing with clears like this is they don't take very long to dry. Hopefully the stream's okay. Just saying about it's uh, frozen. Okay, so you can see now on this side how it's down on there and it's in there just like that. All right, so what we're going to do, just lower that air pressure again. Okay, and what we're going to do is very lightly, we're just going to... Now, I don't know if you can hear it, I know we've got a lot of fan noise tonight, but that's crackling. It's physically, you could hear it spitting. It needs a little bit more air. It's having trouble atomizing it. So just up the air pressure just a little bit. Okay, and then what we can do, we're coming back over. Okay, we're just coming down. Now you can see how wet that's looking and that's what we need we want it to be nice and sort of glossy on the top okay so then what I'm going to do is just going to add another coat right over it okay now you don't want to be tipping it and all the rest of it but hopefully you can see that is very wetking catch it in the light there we go all right and the thing is, when you're going for a gloss, you need it to go wet because it needs time to self-level. If you're airbrushing and it's drying, and i.e. when it's drying, you've got that sort of speckly look to it, the trouble that you're going to have, if I put that just there, hopefully, you can see a little bit. But what happens is, is that it's drying. So that's got a skin on it. So that's not going to change. And if anything, it's going to get a flatter, more satin look. You need it to be wet, okay? Now, the trouble with using something like these glosses that are acrylic ones is they tend to be incredibly thin. Because they're thin, they just want to run. They want to flow off and go over. When you start to use in chemical-based glosses, i.e. two-pack lacquer, things like that, you will notice that these things, that's the hardener, it's like treacle, okay? The great thing is, when they go on, they stick. They just don't move, they don't run. It grips, and that's the difference, okay? So what we've got down in here, we've done on here, you can see it, is that we've got an undercoat under there that was dried and has gone off and everything else. And what has happened is, is that the new one has come along and it's melted into the first one, but it's got something to grip to. Okay, so it's physically holding on to that level. But again, we don't want to be coming along now and sort of saying, right, okay, let's get in here with like air and blow it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to push it all around. You're going to end up with runs. It's going to build up. It's going to fill up, obviously, things like panel lines and stuff like that, which technically, if it's drying naturally, it shouldn't. Okay, so what you can do is you can just either let it sit there like this and stand there, or you can come along with a hairdryer nice low setting okay and then obviously quite a high heat and just skin off the top as I call it all right so hopefully if I don't drag this off 
I have my hairdryer here. I can get this one off here. What I'll do is I will pinch it out of there for one second. Just grab this guy in there. I'm just gonna plug these in. Okay, so what we're going to do, from a distance, we're just going to gloss him off. Now, one interesting little thing is, you might see this is looking pretty milky. Now, this is a sort of sort of byproduct of using an acrylic, because the actual acrylic goes milky as you're drying it. I don't know if you can see it, but around here it's actually looking quite milky, but it's still drying down. Okay, and it needs obviously it's got some bits in there and some little flicks and stuff in there, but it will be continuing to dry back. But it's going to look quite glossy, and then obviously a little rub over this one will be no problem at all with it okay so it's pretty straightforward and then what you do is to be honest you're going to come back in and you're going to give it another coat once that's dried in and then another and another until you're happy so you've had to build up those layers one after the other as you go right the way through it okay the other thing though is you can come in and give it a satin coat okay so if we do the other wing so for this one because we're going to go satin we're going to go high air pressure pretty much balls to the wall as maximum air pressure as you can do okay and then uh, probably do this one let's go quite close okay so it's in like this you can see it's a little bit shiny down there and then looking across it what we're going to do is just going to come in and dust on just a dust type coat and you can see how it's flat and we just dry that down okay so it's it's got a bit of a shine, but don't forget it's huge studio lights, all right? So if we just come again, so we're just gonna go quite a distance away. So when we're doing it, sorry, we go that, here we go. So when we're doing it, we're talking quite a big distance like this, and then we're just gonna come in and we're just gonna go. Okay, and then dry. Dusty coat, dry. Dry it down. So all you're doing is, because you're coming further away, it's actually drying in the way. You know when we were talking about airbrushing generally, and we were saying about you get texture, and it's horrible, and it's the last thing you want, and all the rest of it. When you're doing this type of thing, and you just want a normal sort of perhaps flat to satin finish, just go a good foot away from your model, and just dust on top like that. Okay? And just dry it back. And what happens is, you'll come along with what I would call a nice sort of satin type finish, all right? So if we go just for a, a quick overhead, hopefully you might be able to get one of these to shine. But you can see this one on this side is the one we've done the sort of flat layer to it, okay? It's a nice smooth finish, don't get me wrong, but it's quite flat, as opposed to this side, as you can see, is really glossy. So you've got sort of a satin finish and a glossy finish. Okay, and that is really how we go about doing the different versions, okay? And again, it's just to deal with literally air pressure and distance. High air pressure, it's drying it before it hits the model. So when it hits the model, it is just sticking to each other like little balls or sandpaper and all the rest of it. And that way you get a nice smooth satin type finish, okay? So it's great for doing that type of work. And I've always maintained that I get a better satin finish with this stuff, with clears and stuff, than I do with satins because this way it gives me exactly what I want and it tends to give me a more realistic type of finish, all right? But this one over on this side, you can probably see him, is glossy is. Okay, you can probably see, see how we've gone, the difference in them? If we can catch it in front like this. 
but you've got, I'm trying to find reflectives, there we go. So a nice sort of flatty satin type thing going on, but we've got more of a glossy on there, okay? And that is it, so nice sort of, I quite like that type of finish really for anything sort of 48 scale, 30 second scale for that type of flat look. Again, but there is that thing, you can just keep building it up, so you've got it down on there. But what I like to do is, is to be in a situation where you can see it. Okay, so you want to be able to see it so you can actually see what's going on. So don't just blindly put it down, angle it so you can see how wet it is going down or how flat it's going down or anything else like that. Okay, so that one just goes down on there, we'll just dry that back. Nice satin finish and what we'll do, we'll just lower the air pressure right down. Okay, and then on this side, we're just going to come in and we're going to re-gloss. Not enough. Okay, finding that sweet spot. Okay, so you've got it. So it's glossed. Okay, and we'll let that naturally dry back and then we've got satin. But it's the same product, that's the whole point to it. It's not like you're just using, um, you know, one product can do multiple things, okay? You can use, obviously, a gloss in various different ways. It doesn't just have to be used for glossing. You can use it for satin finish. And again, if you go high air pressure, long distance, you can do flat with it, okay? So again, don't think it's just, it's a gloss, that's all gloss does and all the rest of it. It will give you various different effects just like that. So what we'll do, we'll leave him off to one side okay so clear is great the other thing with clear of course is you can hand paint it you can brush it you can do all those different things with it it's definitely got its place in the hobby and i've probably used liters and liters and liters over the years going right the way through cleaning it out dead simple all we do we'll just tip this back because i am cheap okay and then i use acrylic airbrush cleaner so in my case, uh, actually airbrush thinners, same thing. Okay, I've got some airbrush cleaner somewhere. Okay, and then all you do is give it a clean before it dries. Okay, if it's a liquid state, you won't have any problem with it at all. Okay, so we just pop that down like that. And then what I do, tip it. Clean it out from around the neck. Okay, and then once you've done that, airbrush cleaner, put a bit in here, and then we're just going to blow it out. To be honest, I'm going to put a bit in there, pinch the needle off the end, cleave it nice and clean, and that is it. A lot of people say to me, oh, how do you clean it, and all the rest of it, you must need special stuff, and ammonia, and window, no, just literally airbrush cleaner, or literally just X20A, anything I've got kicking around, it literally doesn't matter. It's one of those things, it's what comes to hand. Okay, as long as it doesn't dry. If it dries in your airbrush, that's a different matter, then you need to soak it, to literally peel it out, because it will come out like a skin, okay? So, other things we have down in here, Next up, polyurethane stuff. Now again, weird stuff to work with, because as its name gives, it is a urethane, uh, which is basically a type of rubber. Uh, just going back, so Stuart is basically just asking, is there any difference between the three types of clears we have? Yeah, uh, this is the old fashioned clear one. It's a little bit thicker, okay, than the brand new Pledge Floor Care one. This one is like milk, it's like a white consistency. What happened was in the EU, I think it's around about 2000, um, they have put this thing where they didn't want clear fluids under the sink because kids were drinking it. So the EU made them say, right, it has to be a colour. So for some reason they went with milk. And then what happened was it had to have a, a flavour and a smell. So people could tell it wasn't just water, which I don't know how you'd never know, but kids apparently were drinking the stuff. So it now has a pretty bitter taste um, on this one, and now it has a very floral smell, okay? They said it's new and improved. In fact, I don't think it's as good as the old one. It does the same thing, it just doesn't do it as well. But 
pledge floor care finish which comes from America you can only get it in the States but as I say I've had this bottle now over a year and I've only used that okay um, that stuff is absolutely gorgeous it just does everything the old one used to do and I find it gives a, a slightly glassier look if you're dipping canopies and stuff like that really very very good you might remember we used it when I did the dolphin helicopter to gloss it and stuff like that and it worked an absolute treat on that one Okay, so polyurethanes. Okay, it is a urethane, which is like a latex-based rubbery type substance. Okay, so this is a gloss. Again, it's just, it's very thick. It takes a little bit of, you know, getting used to working it and all the rest of it. Okay, they do obviously a satin and a matte. I'm not a huge fan of these because, I don't know, they just tend to always rub me up the wrong way. But for doing dead flat finish, and if you want to get things to be nice and flat looking, it's not too bad. When you decant this stuff, as you can see it's pretty thick okay but I have to say that's a good thing for what we want okay because we want to be going with an actual uh, a flat on this okay what we could want is it to actually just be really hard to spray so that way it struggles a little bit so that way it spits and it, it does all those things that's actually what we want this is a good thing for us okay so same thing again up the air pressure listen to your airbrush and when I was spraying that, you could hear it get to it, and then suddenly it slows right down. It's quite thick stuff, okay? So down on here, we have our little Harrier. Okay, so actually what we're going to do is, he's quite, you might notice, he's quite glossy, this guy. If we do him under here, you'll see he's a pretty a glossy type of guy, all right? What I'll do is, hold on, let me just do this, and then I can do this. Might be better for you, all right? So what we'll do, we do him under here. And we can show, hopefully, him killing this off. So, where's a nice shiny picture? There we go. Okay, so when we come in with this, we're just going to come in. Are you seeing it go? So we just layer this up. So if we want to go with a dead flat finish on this guy. Okay. This is the stuff you want, because this will make anything dead flat. This is the complete opposite. So this stuff's pretty good if you want a nice, dead, never to see a shiny bit ever again finish. And that's not me. I generally can't find a flat e shiny bit on there anywhere. Okay? It is pretty strong stuff, but it gives you an extremely flat finish okay so if you do want a really really strong flat finish this stuff is great this stuff comes into its own things like dioramas if you want to flatten off groundwork walls you know texture in materials things like that polyurethane paint is absolutely great downside to it it's pretty horrible if you need to sand it this stuff is very much like we've spoken about with polyurethane primers and stuff like that it rolls up it's more like a rubber okay but it does give a extremely nice smooth flat finish okay it's my sort of go-to dead flat all right which is fine as long as you want dead flat never to see a shine again okay the only thing is is that this stuff can take a little bit to dry actually this is doing quite well as well it's one of those things that takes a little bit longer to dry than your standard um, types of flats out there your more acrylics and stuff like that but really as you can see we've deaded him off completely under there is never to be seen again all right uh stuart says hi phil clear coats uh obviously good for applying decals uh, but does it make any difference if the clear coat is matte or satin the whole point with decaling don't forget is though is to give you the best possible adhesion and zero air underneath so that you don't get any silver in okay so if you're going to be decaling you really want gloss so that way it's a super smooth finish for your decals to sit onto and to bed into. If you've got any type of texture like a flat coat has, what happens is you get air pockets that get stuck in all those little micro things. Easiest way to do it is look at a, like a, a coarse sanding stick as a, a, you know, a totally over the top part. But when you look at the texture on here, you see how flat that is. Okay, It's purely because light can't reflect off of it. Okay, It's got some little sparkles and everything else like that but it should give you 
um, you know, an idea of what's going on when your paint is flat. So what happens is, if you try to decal over this, what it would actually do is just give you silvering because it's air trapped in between the layers. Now obviously when you come over to this side it's smoother, you're not going to get as much distance, you'll get less air, less silvering. You've got gloss, when those decals go down and you push that water out, if it just goes surface to surface, perfect and that's no problem. So really, if you're using it for any type of decaling, you want to go gloss every single time, or certainly a satin, okay? There's lots of different things in here, we might even cover it on a standalone live show type thing as well, because you can get away with, sort of, you know, if you've got a smooth, flat finish, like, to be honest, we've got over here on the F16, uh, we've got these fuel tanks. Now these have all been primed, but these are uber smooth, beautifully done, even if I do sing my own phrases. Okay, but the thing is, um, you could decal straight onto this and you wouldn't have a problem. It's not like you've got something like that stuff, it's dead flat or sort of really heavy texture because no air is going to get between that and a decal. But also, it depends on the decal as well. If you've got a decal, to be honest, Tamiya decals are usually quite thick, okay, they can have trouble sort of you know bedding down and sort of getting into this texture, getting into panel lines and stuff like that. Then you're going to get silvering and all those types of bits, okay. So, again, it is that thing, but personally, I would say just go straight in there with gloss work and you'll be absolutely fine because it gives you the best possible and the closest finish zero silvering and also it, it stops it getting edges and various things on there and bits and pieces like that and certainly if you're going to come in and weather and sand the decal and stuff like that if it's perfect and down you run less risk of it tearing ripping if you need to mask over it we're talking about that on the uh, live at five show because it's down, it's biting all the way. A lot of those ones where you see and people peel it and the decal comes off because it hasn't actually adhered underneath. It's done it around the edges perhaps, but not the middle. And that's because it hasn't got good surface tension, you know, gripping itself down on there. Uh, Neil says, hi Phil, I was called away uh, for a few minutes. I'm not sure if you answered this, uh, but no, uh, when to use flat and satin and gloss for the final uh, finished coat. Photos seem uh, unreliable as the light sources can vary um, uh, and there is a rule of thumb, e.g. well to aircraft, flat, modern, oh yeah. Again, it's one of those things with this, if you're into a situation where um, you know, you've got good reference photos of a particular subject and they seem to be quite glossy, then go glossy, you know, uh, if it's flat. Personally, and I know this seems a bit funny as we're sat here doing this, I've moved away from doing this. Uh, I don't tend to do gloss works and I don't tend to do, you know, um, you know, flat finishes and stuff. I tend to polish everything now. And I know it's a shameless plug and I'll give it another go. Uh, but this is what I've been using for months and months and months now. I've been using when we, I was designing these um, and going through the motions of it. But it is that thing where if you've got a, a nice finish, okay, and it's pretty just, you know, a muted finish right the way over the model. So let's say if you're using grey, or even if you're doing like World War II camo, by lightly sanding it all over, you get a nice flat, but because you're sanding it, you're not going to get it completely universal. It's not like when you airbrush on like we did down on this guy and gave it a flat coat, because that just is universal from the front to the end is all flat and there's no shininess on there, okay? But when you're sanding and doing that, some of it is going to be more sanded than others, and that's where you get tonal differences and variations and stuff. And I must admit, I love the way that the ME262s came out on the top more than the bottom. The bottom looks great, but I love the top because when you look across it, some areas are quite shiny, other areas are quite sort of flat, some areas are a little bit in between, but it is that thing, as light catches it, especially if it's rotating on a stand, you can see all those different sort of effects and various things, and it is quite a pleasantly rewarding way of looking at your model, because no matter how you view it, it looks different. It's not like it's just flat, grey, brick. Again, it's that thing of making your model move, bringing it to life, making it look like it's doing something when it's sitting still, you know? And that's the thing with it. The trouble is, if you're going to come in with flat coats, and I've done it in the past, and do the entire model with it, it just doesn't look real to me, you know? It just has that thing. You want it to give it more movement, and you want it to be quite shiny in some areas, and, you know, less in others, and various things, so forth and so on. Uh, and that's why I like doing the polishing trick these days. Just to show you, we were talking about the milkiness whilst this dye is drying. You see on this wing, we've got a tide mark. Hopefully you can see it on there. It's actually got a tide mark. As this is drying, it's got a white tide mark. Don't worry about those at all. You might notice it up the front here on the leading edge of that wing. Hopefully you can see that. That will go, it will dry back. 
okay it will dry back it's just one of those things a lot of people see that and you panic and really there's no need to panic uh, have you ever used Windsor and Newton uh, Glacier uh, acrylic varnish I've used the matte uh, for armor builds I haven't I must admit I did use a Windsor and Newton but I don't think it was that it was something else many many moons ago I had a, a bottle of it glass bottle of it in there uh, and things but again I think you know I know we're talking about clear coats here but even with armor you know armor is flatter than aircraft don't get me wrong but you don't want dead flat because in the reality is they're not you know they have worn areas and rubbed areas and things like that so don't over flat your model it's nice to have a little bit of movement in there Stuart says so flat uh, clear coats always have a texture uh, that is not good for deckling can you not apply a smooth flat clear coat? Yeah, of course you can, and absolutely. This is quite smooth down here, but all we're saying is, is that if you're gonna go with a flat coat down on there, uh, you're always getting that little pocket. So that's what a flat coat actually does. You know, it's the difference between high gloss and a flat finish is just the surface texture. So all we're saying is to limit, obviously, glass and everything else. But like we're saying, F16 is a classic example. This, I would call it a beautiful satin finish um, because it is, it feels like gloss um, and everything else, but technically it's a flat, it's not reflecting anything uh, and anything else like that. But certainly I probably could get away with deckling over this if it was a nice decal. If it was a thick, heavy duty decal, I'd probably gloss it first then put the decal down just to give, as I said, better adhesion to stick the decal down when it goes over the actual model. Hokey dokey. Right, so that's your polyurethanes for dead flat finishes. So I'll tell you what we'll do just to this guy. We'll just continue spraying this right the way over him just to use up what we've got. Okay. So hopefully if I get him so he's shiny, I angle him so you can see he's shiny. And you can, we can kill off the shininess. Okay, so the point where, where you're trying to kill things dead flat, what you're trying to do is, is just, you're putting it down so it's dry. So as you actually come along, you don't want it to look wet. You just want it to look flat and dry. You see how this guy's flattening off? Okay, so good high air pressure bit of distance right the way over and we'll flatten this guy off okay right the way over everything what we do we just draw him back so Basic rule of thumb, if you're looking to... If you're looking for a more flat finish, then you want to up your air pressure. Because that way it's drying it as it's going down, it's going to give you texture and it will just flatten everything right off. So all I'm doing is air now, this is just drying this off. Okay, and there we go, that's our flat harrier now. Okay, so you can see there's no real shine to this at all. Okay, so that's what I would call pretty much flat on that guy, right the way over it. Got a little bit of shine on the front still. Let me just do this bit. There we go. So there we go, flat. Pretty straightforward, no problem at all. My favorite flat, to be honest, still is this. Um, if you just want a simple, straightforward, just does the trick, never gives you a problem or anything else like that, this is the one you want to go with, okay? XF86, Tamiya, it's one of those things, it's really, really straightforward. All you do is just gonna mix it 50-50, okay? That's gonna give you more of a satin finish right the way over. Perfect for doing 172nd, 148 scale aircraft, things like that. If you're moving up to 32nd or 24th, you might wanna back off the thinners a little bit, make it a little bit thicker, gives you a little bit more texture, and because of the scale, that should come in just about right. Um, I think that's actually how we did it on the Typhoon when we were doing that one. But certainly, it's my sort of go-to for a flat. 
purely because it's really easy to use. The polyurethane is great for flat. I certainly wouldn't trust it for gloss and satin and all those things, but it's great for doing flat work. But the Tamiya, um, you know, it's just Tamiya. It's just mix it 50-50, you'll get a satin to flat finish. And again, just back off the thinners a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. So, you know, 60-40 uh, to actually to the, the paint itself. And that way it will give you a very nice, you know, fuss-free type of flat finish and everything else like that on there. So there we go. That is that one. Let me just bring that in. So you can see this guy's now flatty flat and all gone. Okay, so no problem. And then if we have another look at this guy, he's drying still. You can see it's got that milkiness into him. That will go. You can see that milkiness all back here. Again, don't panic when you see that. It will go though. And you can see it is very glossy. Nicely glossy. There we go. So as this dries, and then on that side we've still got a nice sort of satin finish on there. Okay, so next up, if you've got really, you want thick gloss, you want this type of effect. Hold on, let me grab it. I know he's dusty, so excuse the dust, but if you are after something like this, then this is... You know, you've, you're basically into almost treating it like car paint and all the rest of it. It's like how we did the airliner. But if you do want something that is completely rock hard, gloss mirror type black, again, forget the top because it's covered in dust and yucky and all the rest of it, then obviously this is what you're going to go with, all right? So the thing is, you're into that realm, to be honest, of using two-pack type lacquers. The thing with two-pack lacquers is, I know it terrifies a lot of people and all the rest of it, but if you're using a two-pack lacquer, it's chemically based, okay? So what's gonna happen is, the gloss on its own will not go off. It can't do anything, okay? It will simply just be like treacle on your model forever. So you need a hardener. That's the two-pack or two-part to the actual uh, gloss itself, all right? The great thing with this is, because it's a chemical reaction, as soon as it's down on there, as soon as heat applied to it and everything else like that, it's going off, okay? It's gonna take longer than what we've got tonight to be totally rock hard like that is, but we can show you the basics of actually using it. The thing to remember though is, it's not nice stuff. So, you want to be using either one of these, this is a 3M, somebody asked me earlier what it was, this is 7502, and I've got a couple of uh, A1 filters on this one, which are, I don't know what the actual number is for these, uh, but we've spoken about before, we've seen them loads of times before, minimum requirement. Extractors, if you've got them, make sure they're on, turn them on and all the rest of it. This stuff is not nice stuff to be breathing in. Luckily, we're only using for very small amounts, so it doesn't really matter, okay? But if you are, you really want to be using something a little bit to save your health and everything else like that. So on Buster, um, as you can see, he's had a hard life. He's dead flat, there's nothing going on, and to be honest, he's covered in rubbish and dust and junk and, and everything. He's really, really finding it difficult these days. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just give him a straightforward two-pack gloss coat right the way over it, and show you what this stuff can do. But the first thing he does need is a damn good clean, because unfortunately, he is, covered in dust and grime and all those things uh, and like all gloss work you really want to prepare your surface okay because obviously the better the surface is that it goes on the better result you'll get okay so there's no point trying to put gloss down onto something I know we're going to do it on this but it's a little bit different from what I've got in mind for this um, without having a prepared surface so if we just clean most of him off so he's halfway decent comes complete with uh, zimmerit on this one so he's all right he'll be okay at least nothing will be able to stick to him probably this either okay so we're just going to blow this away and get rid of what we've got in here so polyurethane again normal acrylic airbrush cleaner we'll get rid of that okay so we're just dump that into here. Which thinner for the XF86, X20A or self-leveling thinner? Preferably, I would say, if you're gonna go for, you know, a normal sort of flat finish, X20A. You don't need the self-leveling thinner in there. If you want to doing that, every time the compressor cuts in, we uh, lose a camera. 
sorry, apologies for that. I will reroute the power supply because I think that's what it is. It's on the same loop. So we'll come up with a different power supply for that. Uh, but yeah, if you you know obviously if you're going to go glosses and stuff, then using something like an X28 uh, is okay. But if you want to use something like a self-leveling thinner, you're always going to get a nicer, smoother finish purely because it just slows down the drying time and gives it a little bit more time to uh, react and dry and everything else. So you just stick these over here. So any chance of getting a preview of the MRP uh, gloss uh, varnish supposed to be the metallic sparkly flat uh, not on this one I am doing it though because you're on about uh, what the have glass one which is this stuff um, I'm actually going to be using it uh, on Monday when I spray the F16 so that is the stuff I have two bottles of it thank you Merrick for that for getting them in for me okay so this stuff, it's basically a two to one, isn't it? If I remember rightly, ratio on this one. To be honest, I go in one to one a little bit more because it makes it dry quicker and it thins it a little bit more, okay? So what we'll do is we'll just stick in the gloss first. And as you can see, this stuff is really, really thick. Okay, you might notice this stuff in here. It has the consistency of treacle. Now, if you used to put that through your airbrush now, as we said, the only thing is it won't dry at all. Okay. Yeah, don't panic about that, everyone. What I'll do is I'm going to take the computer off of the loop, uh, the electrical loop. It's obviously something to do with that. Okay, so what we're going to do is 50 50 mix between hardener and the other one. Okay, so then what we'll do, we'll just grab a cocktail stick and we're just going to mix these up. So it looks like vodka in here. But you've got to mix it well, because if you don't, you're going to get softy bits and wet bits and all the rest of it. Okay. So we're just going to give that a damn good mix up. Okay, and when you really mix it well, it will go clear again. But just make sure you've got it right off the corners and off the edges and everything else. Because if you don't mix it well, it can give you all types of problems, okay? That's one thing I learned. Okay, so we'll decant it into here. A couple of bits in it from your stick, but never mind. Okay. So... Uh, if we do that and then that, no, uh, that one I think might be better. Okay, so what we do, we'll start at the back here. Okay, coming through. So what we're going to do is turn the air pressure down until it's workable. Okay, so then what we're going to do, we'll start down here. So when you put it down, this stuff, you want to do it so it's wet. So we go over it, okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a coat down and then hit the extractor. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start up here. It's a nice wet look. Okay. Just trying to see it as well as you can see it. So again, it has a nice, really wet look to it. Okay, now what we're going to do is because of this over thing, we just hit an extractor. <laughs> we might need both of them actually. You can see this stuff is like glass on here, okay, and this has gone over an unprepared, unfinished area, okay, so that's one layer on, so what we're going to do is we're going to layer this guy up, so we're just going to come in, and we'll start at the bottom, and we're going to go number two, OK, 
Okay. You can see how this stuff goes on. And this is flat, dead flat covering in one hit. Okay. Now the great thing with this is, is that it doesn't actually fall off. Okay. You don't want to be obviously coming in and having it at funny angles and everything else. If you can keep it flat, you'll be fine. But if you heat this up with a hairdryer, it goes off even quicker. Okay. So we're really looking down here at the body and we can see how we've got that sort of mirror glass finish. Okay, then even up here on the tail, it's actually looking pretty good. And I think with a third little flyover, it would have it very, very nice. Okay, so airliners, bikes, cars, all that type of thing. And again, it'll take a little bit for this to go off but it should give you a really heavy duty glossy finish. But that is, if you're doing it, where are we, there we go. The thing is, if you're gonna be using that stuff like that, um, it literally is heavy duty. It's gonna fill up your panel lines, it's gonna take care of any sort of surface detail. You could lose it under there. It will soak in uh, and it's not gonna do it, but you will lose fine detail. So you wouldn't be using this stuff if you're onto something like, I don't know, um, your 48 scale Spitfire and stuff like that. Let me just turn that off. Shows how good that is. <laughs> it clears the room well. Okay, so from that point of view, this is the type of thing for bikes, airliners, you know, anything you want a solid gloss mirror finish. The great thing with it is it's idiot proof. I can spray it. I must admit, I've got the hang of this stuff since day one of using it. Okay. And then when you come along, you can use it and you come up with some great effects like under here. Again, solid look, good panel line detail on here. And even the smaller stuff is all still in here. It hasn't lost any of that type of effect. You might be able to see under here. We've still got all the little details and things like that in here but it's not like it's completely lost all those, you can see them. But certainly I don't think I'll be trying it on anything very, very fine detail and things like that, because honestly I think you'll just lose them and it isn't gonna to work too well at all, okay? But again, glossing is one of those things where it depends on the environment you're using it, what you're actually glossing. Are you glossing a car, you want a mirror finish, then obviously I don't think you can go wrong with two-pack stuff because it's chemical reaction, it just gets on with it and does it, okay? If you're doing it as we were doing it down on here and you wanted it glossy on the wing of a plane, as you can see, we are pretty glossy down there. I think once you've had a little polish afterwards, you'll be fine or we've got a nice sort of satin finish down on there, okay? And then obviously for matey boy, who if you want dead flat and you just want flat, as you can see how he was earlier, he is now flatter than a flat thing on flat day. Okay, he is completely flat. All right, so it, again, it's one of those things where some people I think really overcomplicate it. It doesn't have to be complicated at all. You can just go through the motions of doing it. It doesn't matter if you're using, you know, things like Superclear, which I'll have a go with in a minute, okay? Or if you're using, you know, things like the Goosey Agent. What you have to work out though is the thinness of it. If it's a very thin product, i.e. you're using something like Clear, Goosey or anything else, you have to allow for the fact is that it's gonna take layers to build up before you can get it to a mirror finish for that high performance gloss. If you just want a satin, thinner ones are gonna give you a better look than uh, anything else straight away. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, Paul says, uh, any thoughts, tips, uh, hints and tips on using the MIG Lucky Varnish range? I didn't even know they did one, to be honest. Um, Again, I, this is one of those things, it's personal choice. I'm demoing here with pretty much everything I've got, but I don't tend to use any of them anymore anyway. Uh, I tend to polish, I tend to, it just gives me a nicer feel, and, uh, and also it's more creative, I think, from that type of thing. Um, if I was doing a car and I wanted a mirror finish, to be honest, I'd use two-pack glosses, because I just think that you can't beat them. They're just so easy to use, and it's hard as nails, and you can physically polish it afterwards like a real car because technically that's what it is. If I wanted something with more of a satin finish, so perhaps if we're thinking sort of, you know, a 48 classic jet, something else like that, which are quite satiny finish, honestly, I'd probably use a clear and just dust it on from a bit of a medium distance and then that way you get a nice sort of satin finish and then perhaps a light rub afterwards to give it that type of thing. 
Uh, what do you clean your airbrush after using two pack? Lack of thinners. So we'll do it in a minute. We'll just come along and I use obviously self leveling thinners because that's what I've got here. But lack of thinners, go through it. I'll show you in a moment anyway. Blow that out, get rid of that. And then obviously you can then just put your normal airbrush cleaner through it afterwards just to make sure it's all lubed up and ready to go with no problem at all. Uh, Philip says, hi Phil, um, I have just uh, packed your new polishing sand, sorry, uh, just have a pack of your new polishing sanders and I've used them on my Academy 148 Tomahawk starting uh, me at the surfaces from the matte frosted look you get uh, when you apply too much flat coat. Will the new polishers sand uh, help giving the Tomahawk a satin finish? Again, it's, uh, oh, he's a fill with two L's. <laughs> uh, right, so the thing is, if you've got that frosting look, it's physically in the, the surface. Um, what you can do, though, is sand it with the green one and take it off, okay? And then that way you can go over it again. You might not need to. It might be enough to cut through that clear coat with that type of frosting on there. But that's what we're saying. If you're going to come in with a matte coat, okay, and you put too much material down, this white stuff that you can see in all these bottles then comes back and performs a layer. It should be used very thin. Don't forget, it's a finish. It's not actually a physical painted layer. It's not like a gloss coat, which has to be all the way down and level. When you're using matte or satin, it's almost like an effect right the way over it, and it's slightly different to glossing. Glossing is flooding the area, so it's got time to self-level, balance it out, and you get a nice mirror finish, okay? The trouble is, though, is that if you're coming in with a flat and you put too much of it down, uh, especially if you put it down quite wet, as it dries it dries with that texture in and when we looked earlier at the wherever I did with it the X22 uh, or X21 this stuff okay what you've got is this on the surface of your model that's really what it is this is just it's a basing agent it's just a flat uh, a matte effect that's added to paint okay so this stuff is white and chalky and as it dries it will then just dry literally like this and it ends up giving you that sort of horrible sort of chalky dusty type look and all the rest of it put a bit on buster it will dry back chalky with any look okay and things like that so yeah from that point of view that's all it is it's just overdone it so what you want to do is when you're coming in with further coats and things like that just put it down just a minimal effect you can get it i did it i did it once with a lancaster and totally ruined it so i wanted to give it a more of a flat look and to be honest i was trying to add a little bit of white base into it and it just gave it it looked like it had just come through a snowstorm by the time i'd finished with it it wasn't a good day uh, Jonathan says, have you ever finished a gloss coat using polishing compound, e.g. Uh, Tamiya Fine? Yes, all the time. Um, to be honest, I polished up the airliner. I can't get it down because it's a bit precarious. I'll never get it off again. Let's see what else we got. Uh, the bike's in a thing. But yeah, I've got here... Uh, this one, uh, which is obviously a Tamiya Fine uh, polishing compound. This is the finishing one. Um, I tend to use it. I use it a lot on all my canopies as well. If you've just seen the uh, F-16 part, you'll notice I was using it on that one as well. So it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. Very easy to use. Just polish it down and away you go. If you're using this stuff, like two-pack stuff, don't forget it goes hard as nails. You could use car polish on it because it is literally like a brick. you have no problem with that at all. Okay, right. So let me just clear this out and I can show you how we clear this out. So we just tip that back in there. Put that off to one side, and by the morning that'll go rock hard. It will just be absolutely like a brick. Okay, let's just pop that over there. So what I tend to do is we'll just come straight in with some lacquer thinners into here. All right. Then we just got our cleaning out brush as normal. Go right the way around the top. Okay. So make sure you clean it right up around the edges so it is all completely washed out. Because what it's doing now is just thinning it all down and getting rid of it so just make sure it's all gone make sure your business end on the tip as well so I always just give it a little brush just like this okay then once you're done all we're going to do chuck it in here and we just blow it in it's easier to chuck it in a cleaning station than it is elsewhere so that quickly goes down and out okay give it a clean give it a rub Make sure it's all 
got it out. Apologies for that loss of signal thing. As I say, I will get it switched over next week. I'll get it onto a different loop. Okay, then once that one's gone through, airbrush cleaner. Okay, and then we repeat. So rub it right up around the outside to the tops. And around the front end as well. All the bits just like that. Okay, and you can see it's still quite a, a dirty colour because some of that is off the brush as well. Alright, and then this time though we'll blow it onto here so we can see what's coming out. So we're looking for any bits, we're looking for flex, crispy bits, pumping the trigger so you can see exactly what is coming out of your airbrush. Okay, and we've got nothing at all, which I'll be happy then just to stick that in my cupboard and away you go. What I tend to do is this bit round here, which has got all the juices now on there and all the rest of it, just wipe round the entire neck, the body, absolutely everywhere then just clean it off because it it is that thing it's a you know expensive bit of kit you don't want it to be looking rough and there we go it's all done just like that no problems at all very easy straightforward let's take that off and that is about it that is glossing it's easiest we just have a look and we know we do a couple of tests in a sec but you know this is now self leveling beautifully so you can see, and don't forget, you know, I know you might be looking and thinking, well that doesn't look very smooth. This was Buster and we didn't even do anything apart from rubber cloth over him. And you know how rough he is, because, you know, this is what he was, so he's pretty, you know, nasty and gnarly and, and everything else. You can see how bad he is, and then all we did was give him a rub and now he's all glossy. And that's going to dry and self-level and all the rest of it. It's going to take about, I would say, six hours to go off to be handleable. Okay. Then we've got a Harrier for your flat coats. You can see it has a really nice satin to flat finish on it. Okay. Satin, I always imagine satin has a little bit of a shine to it. You can actually get reflections off of it. This, we're not getting any real reflections off of it. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, nicely done. And then we got down in here, we have Buster Junior, and as you can see, that wing really glossy. It's continuing to dry very naturally, but you can see that white is now disappearing on that wing tip. On that wing, it's going now all together. And then this wing tip, you can see it's quite flat. It's like a satin. So as you say, high gloss. There we go. That's the angle we want. Okay just like that. Very straightforward, no problem at all. Okay, so we just let them dry a minute and then we're going to have a go with this stuff in a moment because I want to have a go with it. Okay, so questions. Uh, do you have any concerns putting two pack paint through your airbrush? No, nope. I've been doing it for years and it still works. Um, don't forget modern airbrushes, it's Teflon seals. Um, Teflon is pretty much impervious to everything. It's not like rubber seals and stuff like that. But if you're putting cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners through your airbrush, two pack gloss paints and stuff like that aren't gonna make any difference whatsoever to it. It'll be absolutely fine. Just rule of thumb, like I always say, as soon as you finish with it, clean it, okay? Don't give it time to dry. If it dries, and it ever did, if you forgot about that, went to bed, come back next day, it will be like a brick. You will be chiseling that out with a knife to get rid of it, or soaking it for days trying to get it out. Just think about it, you've used a product that's not gonna be easy to get off if it dries. It's no different from you using clear or anything else. If it dries inside your airbrush totally, it's a pain to get out. So, rule of thumb, as soon as you finish with it, flush it, blow it through, clean it out, your job's done, it's taken me two seconds, that airbrush, I'd quite happily put anybody else's paint through it, and away we go, we'd have no problem with it at all, um, you know, but as you say, it's one of those things, I've had the horror stories where people have not cleaned out their airbrush, they haven't used their airbrush for a month, come back, and it's almost, you've got to throw it away, uh, I've known a guy who put it into an ultrasonic cleaner, soaking it and everything, it was in lacquer thinners, and it still never really got it cleaned out. It was just lumps of bits of it coming out for months and months after it wasn't good at all. So from that point of view, just think about it, clean it out and you'll be good to go. And you shouldn't really have any problems with it. Any more questions? Post up your questions then guys. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna try this. Now this was 
I've forgotten your name now, because <laughs> I've lost the letter that goes with it. One of the members sent me this up saying, is there something wrong with it? And he sent me a load of spoons, okay, to spray with it. I am not a fan in any way of anyone who sprays spoons, okay? The thing is, I think with spraying spoons is, it's great for telling you what colour it is, but naff for giving you the texture, okay? Purely because, even in, I'm feeling the inside of the, the texture of these spoons, and they're pretty rough okay not everything is equal okay these are incredibly cheap molding because obviously it's just a disposable spoon so no one's worried about it so what can happen is you can get texture on them you can get all types of nasties were the spoons cleaned beforehand i can guarantee probably not because nobody cleans spoons okay but i'm not a fan of cleaning spoons i prefer to have a buster environment of something lying around so you can actually test it and put it on there and everything else this is super clear i have never used it in my life my worry to this would be is it's extremely thin um, so to get a gloss effect it ain't gonna happen with this okay so as soon as you've got the air pressure a little bit too high I can imagine it's gonna be a bit of a problem but for the sense of science we will give it a whirl and we'll see what happens to it okay so shift up the air pressure blowing through clear Okay, so what we do, we just grab a stick. So, I'm going to do a little pour some of this to count some of this in here. Not tons of it, I think we're going to need tons of it. It's lacquer based, I can tell you that, because it stinks. This is really strong, that's incredibly strong stuff, it smells horrendous. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll borrow uh, Buster's dodgy wing and just check our flow. Air pressure right back. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come down in here on his wing and we'll try and gloss this wing. So first off, pass just a nice sort of satin finish. Quite a high air pressure. Okay. Just like that. And there, that's on there. Okay, so it's actually it's quite nice stuff apart from God it stinks. It stinks to high heaven this stuff. Okay, so next coat, a little bit more. Okay, quick blow through with that. Okay. So this is, I have to say, actually it sprays on very nice. And I think if you're putting that over a gloss coat, you probably wouldn't have a problem. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, let me just grab a spoon. Just try it on the back of this once we've got a bit left. Again, I think it may be more technique than than spoon quite nicely. So are we okay now guys? Is it cleared? Apparently we were stuttering or something. Let me turn off that. Again, apologies, it's just because we're not using our normal rig. But that's our spoons, just like that. So, I don't know, let me just give this one another coat. 
I'll just do it over here. One second, because it stinks this. It does pen and ink a bit. Yeah, sorry guys, as I say, stay with us today and then what we'll do is we'll get it sorted out. This time next week, the other computer will be back and we should be fine. Again, I don't understand, I, I think what it is, there must be a bad earth on something uh, and that's what's knocking the camera out slightly. There we go, that's um, the ones, sorry. So, I don't know, it's, I'm not gonna say it's user error, but I'm not getting the same problem. I've got a feeling you're spraying too far away. Okay, I think what's happening is, is when you're laying down your paint, you're laying it down from too far away. Because that actually, it's drying that, so we'll just give it a minute to dry back. But like we were saying, let me go picture in picture a minute. There we go. If we do that and then, uh, mm -hmm. so we want to go uh, that, and that, and that, goes there. Hold on, we'll get this sorted in a minute. We want that with that. That's the one. Okay. Like we were saying with all of this one, if you're spraying from too far away, what happens is it's got too much time for it to dry before it gets to the surface. Okay, and I'll just put my hand in that gloss. Great one. <laughs> Sorry, let me just try and re-gloss that section. I'll put my hand in it. I'll just try it a minute, see what happens. Okay, but the thing is, if you're spraying, like we were saying, uh, and you're doing it from too far away. So if you're like this and you're spraying it just casually, and that's just the shoe now, you're thinking I need to speed this up and dry it. Okay. So I'm gonna do this from a distance and now I'm gonna artificially dry it as well. I think this is the problem you're getting. Okay. So when we come in like this, it's getting back to what you've got. Which really is just giving you a satin, that's a little bit more shiny I think than even you had it. But when you're, you know, this could take a little bit to dry because it's a thicker coat. But also if we have a look at this guy, you can see that this wing actually is pretty nice. Bearing in mind, don't forget, that's had a load of coats of paint all over it now, uh, and it hasn't been a prepared finish or anything else like that, but it actually is pretty much on a par of what we did next door. Okay, so it's not too dissimilar between the two. There we go, see? As you can see, actually it's pretty close to what we've got on both sides now. So yeah, so I think it could be just a little bit of a case there of sort of user error with it. Um, you know, you do need to be on top of it. You need to actually get down a coat. It's quite thin stuff, so you need to sort of build it up and go through the motions, but it depends on what type of gloss you're actually after and various things like that. I'm not gonna attempt fate and try and hit the, um, the hairdryer to speed it up and things like that, but hopefully, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't see a problem with it. It's working for me, if I'm honest. They do a two-pack version of this as well, MRP, so you might wanna give that a a little go. Right, any questions? Shout now guys. Now is the time. Definitely is the time. Let me just make sure we haven't got any questions that have occurred in the forum. Dee -dee -dee. Questions for Phil. Better not do those today. Uh, right, okie dokie. Hold on. Top topics. Uh, Thursday. Doo -doo -doo. Wednesday. Q&A's. Loads of things. Brush, trumpeters, Bedford. I will just give a quick shout out. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look at who did it. It's um, Max Johnson is doing the Bedford Acura Armour 4x4. That is a absolute stunning. I hope it is the one build I was on about yesterday. He's doing an absolute stunning, stunning build on that. He gets my full marks. We're going to be looking at that one tomorrow, uh, the Live at Five show because actually that is actually a very, very nice build. Okay, let me just check questions around. Uh, I 
of show. I think that's all clear. Yeah, that's all clear. That's clear. Any more questions? Any more? That's it. I'll do the closing speech and then you all ask questions. It's normally what happens. <laughs> right, so there we go. That has completed our basic airbrushing. So, as again, I know, you know, a lot of you want to know a little bit more technical questions, but I have tried to limit it to just the basics. Obviously, in time, what we hope to do is revisit these and we do a bit more of an intermediate type one and then we can go on to the real heavy duty stuff and everything else like that. And I know, you know me, I get caught on a rant and a chat and before you know it, we're off doing something completely different. So down on here for clear coating, just to sort of, you know, recap, we've done dead flat finishes or a nice good satin smooth finish right the way through. We've done that on the little Harrier here. Again, he's looking absolutely fine, no problem at all. Showing you that you can actually get away with quite nice glossy finishes. Is this dry to touch? Oh, it is actually. Crikey, I didn't think it'd be dry as touch there. There we go. Touch dry on this guy down on here, you can see, nice and glossy. Now, again, if we had done this properly, we would have prepared this and sanded and, and taken care of everything, but that is all nice and done. No problem with that at all. This, this is dry as well, amazingly. I don't think these would be dry yet, but there we go, these are dry. So again, I wouldn't handle them forever, but they are totally dry, no problem at all. So if you're doing glossy type finishes, things like that onto your aircraft and everything else. Don't forget though, gloss finishes, if you want it to be good, it's all to do with preparation. It starts with your primer coat, going through to your paint coats, polishing perhaps in between coats to making sure it's as gorgeous finish as you can possibly get. Because don't forget with a gloss coat, what you've got at any stage is what's gonna be at the end. So if you've got bits in there, if you've got a hair in there, if you've got a fingerprint, a glue mark, and then if you've got bits of dust get caught up into it, that's gonna stay there through all those different layers unless you sand them out and get rid of them. Unless you do what we've done to Bore Buster here, which is coming along lovely, is gonna give him a totally gloss coat. And is this drying yet? No, it's still a little bit tacky. He's tacky to the touch now, but he's, he's drying, okay? But if you wanted to give him a, a glossy type finish, you know, you can go through and use the two pack technique and chemically set it, okay? The difference being, it's a chemical reaction. Without the hardener, it doesn't go off. It just stays like tar uh, and gluey and treacly and all the rest of it, okay? So you have to put a hardener in there to actually take care of that one. But hopefully over these series of videos, what we've done is dispel a lot of the myths hopefully giving you the knowledge to know whilst it's not doing it and everything else like that. Okay, so we can go through those. If you have got a specific type of question about something with basics of airbrushing and you, we haven't covered it or you'd like to discuss it more, then shoot me up, either shoot it through the Q&A section uh, for me direct or post it up below this one in the actual uh, today's section in the actual uh, forum itself, okay? And then that way I can then address it and perhaps we can then revisit this as like a one-off of answering just all your questions and I can try and recreate them here and then dispel it, fix it, or be as stumped as you are with it and all the rest of it. So from that point of view, hopefully it's got it. But what I've tried to do over this series of videos is just give you the knowledge to know whilst it's doing it, why is it doing it, how can I fix it, and how can I stop that happening again? Because those are the three things that drive everybody mad with airbrushing. Sorry, some airplane flying over. Okay, so from that point of view, hopefully you've got rid of that. But again, if you've got any problems, you know who I am, shoot me up a message and I'll try and help you out anywhere we can. But it's been an absolute pleasure over the last few weeks. As I said, we're going to carry on with these course. We're going to do other things, bits and pieces, a little bit more specifically uh, orientated instead of like general things. We'll specifically do one area and try and move it along just like that as we go along our way through. So, thank you very much for everything. Thank you everyone who's still with me. Andrew, Archie, Brian, Daniel, uh, Matt, Phil, Rob, Stuart, Tony, David, Frederick, Michael, Neil, Paul and Steve. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. And the other 161 of you who aren't in the chat room, where are you all? Get in the chat room. It's what it's all about. And then you can just ask them up down there. Okay, and then hopefully we'll get the computer fixed and everything else like that. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. So that's about it from me tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll catch you all obviously on tomorrow at live at five. And then we'll be back to doing lots of live stuff very, very soon. So too late everybody. Happy modeling and take care. Right, where's the outro? How does this work again? There you go. I think it's something like that. <laughs>